Welcome back to Grow Your Impact, Income, and Influence, the number one show dedicated to helping you reach millions. And today, we're going to talk about lions and what lions have to do with you breaking sales records. So if you hate sales, if you're like, I don't ever want to be on a sales call again, you are going to want to pay attention to this episode right here. This is how to warm your leads up how to have really authentic conversations with them and to have it all automated across chat systems, DMs, and social media. I hope that got your attention because I've got an amazing guest. He recently survived being chased through the African bush by a live lion. No joke. Sean, how are you doing, man? Hey, uh, Steve, first of all, yeah, I'm, I'm alive. I'm safe. I'm well, I made it back uh, from, I was in Zambia, but yes, um, I'm 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 very good. I'm very honored to be here. Uh, I think what you do is just phenomenal, and I think you've. Done, I mean, you you serve your name well, reaching millions. I think you do a great job with what you do. So, thanks so much. So we were talking a little bit. We're going to get into your story about how you got started, how you built a hundred and thirty million dollar sales empire. You've built three businesses. We're going to get into that, but I just share with me about this lion story. Like, how do you get chased through? through the bush in Africa by a lion and lived to tell the tale? Yeah, well, um, great question. So uh, I was born in South Africa. And so I have a lot of family that kind of hangs out in Southern Africa. And <clears throat> my uncle happened to find this little fishing village in the middle of Zambia of all places. And, and uh, so I had, I've been fortunate enough to go there a couple of times. And um, so my wife and I, she's been there twice now. I've been there three times. And this, this was the third time that I've gone down there. And so I knew some of the guides and everything else. And it took us a long time to get there because you have to take like five planes just to get there. And then when you get there, you take a little puddle jumper plane and you have to like dust the runway and knock the animals off because they're all over the place. Then you land the plane and then you take a drive through this like riverbed and there's elephants and leopards and all of the water buck and buffalo and all of it. Um, and you get to this little fishing camp and it's right on the Zambezi River right below Victoria Falls, which is one of the seven wonders of the world. And um, the guides love me and, and my wife. And so we've been there a couple of times and we fished for uh, about seven days. And on the last day, one of these guides who is like a total savage uh, Bushman, he says to me, he says, Sean, because I love fly fishing. My wife and I are fly fishermen. And uh, he said, let's go fly fishing because nobody usually goes fly fishing in that area. But let's let's go a little off the path. And so we're like, OK, great. So we took the boat up. And we parked the boat and I jumped and he's like, let's get off the boat. And I was like, dude, that's like the cardinal rule. Like, don't get off the boat because there's a bunch of wild animals all over the place. And it just happened that we were fishing near there the day before. And I saw two crocodiles attack a water buck, like almost right where we were standing. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like, why am I getting off this boat right now? And the guide says, don't worry, I got you covered. I'm like, oh, that, you know, like very <laughs> comforting in Southern Africa. And so we get off the boat and we go and start fly fishing around some like fallen trees and we didn't get any bites. And we got back on the boat and we went to another little island and we got off the boat again and I thought I was like, okay, second one. Okay. Maybe I got the I got used to it. And I know caught, I caught a fish on that Island, which was great. Um, and then we, we get on the boat, we go to the third place and we get off the boat and this place is a little different, a bigger Island. And the, bu the bush is like um, the hippos had been walking along the edges. And so the hippos are so big, they like knock down all the brush in the bush. And so we walked in the hippo trails down to the fallen trees. We fished around those. And we came back and we went past the boat to go the other way because there's another place we were going to fish. And we got about 150 yards past the boat. And it was me and it was this other little guy, uh, his 15 year old kid. And then our guide was in front. And we're about 150 yards past the boat. And I hear this incredibly aggressive animal noise coming from like my, you know, four o'clock sound like, rawr, rawr, rawr. you know, I like look back and I see a 550 pound lion prancing through the brush right at our guide like full speed right and when you get chased by a lion the immediate reaction most people are like run 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 however if a, if a lion chases you you're supposed to stand your ground which is like the scariest thing ever to think about right and so the guide sees it and i was like lion lion and he turns he's like back to the boat so we kind of like scuttled back to the boat fairly quickly but not running we jump in the boat the guide pulls the anchor in and we back the boat out and the first line comes around and sits down. And the second one that was flanking us from behind sits right next to him and just peered at us. 
as we like drove the boat off. And um, I've never, my heart was racing the whole time, but luckily we were, we were, we were okay. So yeah, that's, that's what happened. Wow. Stand your ground. If a lion charges you stand your ground. I think that that actually can translate to marketing sales. Yeah. Life. Yeah. In general. So maybe that's a great way to start. So now that we got the lion story out of the way, take us back to how does one become a sales professional? Were you born with it? No, no, nobody is born with being a sales professional. And I think that's uh, it's a myth, right? So a lot of people say you have the gift of gab or you're good with people. And that might be true, but that's just because your personality and where you're brought up from sales is a trained skill, right? And anybody that wants to get good at it can get good at it. What I typically tell people is this, I can teach anyone to sell at a very high level in a weekend. But the problem is, is if you don't have enough at bats to test and work your sales material to get good at it, you're going to fail. You'll never become good at sales. You might have the theory and the memorization part of like how the structure works, but it's until you start getting where the rubber meets the road and you're having those interactions is that's where you truly like kind of iron out the fire of being good at sales. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So how did you go from not being able to sell to being able to sell? Let's walk, let's unpack your story just a little bit so people know where you came from. Yeah, it's so, not like you were always getting chased by lions. No, 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 not at all. Uh, so it's so about 20, 25 years ago, I came out of college and I had one question on my mind. And that question was, how do I make a boatload of money? That's what I wanted to do. And so I went to the only person that I'd seen make a little bit of money was my dad. Uh, my, my, him and my mom had a little import export business. Um, and for cookware. And I said, Dad, how do I make a boatload of money? And he goes, well, you have three choices. And I was so excited because I was like, oh, it's multiple choice. I can do this. Okay, what are my choices? And he says, number one, are you a CEO? I'm 21 at the time coming out of college. And I'm like, Dad, I don't even know what those letters mean, dude. Like, no, that is not me at all. He goes, okay, okay, okay. So bad question. Number two, are you an entertainer? And I, was, I thought about it for a minute. I was like, mm, I can't sing. I can't really dance that well. Like, no, nah, I'm not an entertainer. What's the third choice? And he says, um, well, you better go learn sales. And I said, okay. I took the advice and I went and I found a sales job and I sold commodities. So these are things like metal, um, aluminum extrusion, steel. So I'd sell truckloads to companies that would build like window frames and put windows in and then like they would distribute those. And so... Um, I, I, I got this job and I was like, okay, I'll just be good at sales. And everyone's telling me, hey, you can talk to people, just go talk to people. And my boss says, here's this book as a manufacturer's directory guide of all these companies. He says, go call these companies and sell to them. I'm like, okay. So I pick up the phone and I start making calls and I didn't make an appointment. And I didn't make an appointment and I didn't make an appointment. Guess how many? I, so for six weeks, I made 80 cold calls a day, like wow. a lot, right? 2,400 attempts. Steve, how many appointments do you think I booked? I mean, I would hope 1%. I mean, 1% would be 240. So if we go even, let's go a tenth of a percent, 24, 24. Goose egg, bro. Zero for 2,400. Like if that's not the worst sales record of anybody ever of all times, it proves to you that sales is a learned skill. And so I sucked. And after six weeks, I was ready to throw the white flag in. And I was like, this is not for me. I hate this. And I called my dad and I said, dad, I don't want to do this anymore. And he said, don't quit. I said, okay, what should I do? He said, go to the library and read a book. I'm like, great. Thanks, dad. Like great, uh, great advice. So I ended up going to the library and I picked up a, a Tom Hopkins, how to master the art of selling stuff book. And I was like, oh, I'll just sit in the library and I started reading it. And I got to this particular chapter and it was like, how to set appointments. And I was like, oh my God, there's a formula. And like the whole time coming through school, I was like, I'm good at formulas. I can execute on that. I did well in my grades and stuff. Maybe I should just try this formula. So I read it, I read it, I read it. I like photocopied the thing. And then I, I, I went and I took this back to my job. So the next Monday I got on the phone. I was so excited. I got to work. I pick up the phone. I start. I make my dial and I get to the part where I'm starting to say the stuff. And I got to the place where I'm supposed to ask for the appointment. And I went to say the line that I had practiced over and over and I froze and the hair stands up on my neck, sweat beads start coming down my face and I'm panicking. I'm like, blah, and I totally butchered the line. But the guy on the other end was cool enough to say, Sean, I know what you're doing. Like, just come on over at nine. I need some of your stuff. Let's talk. And I was, I tried to hold back my emotions. Like, okay, sounds great. And like, I got off the phone and I started dancing and jumping around my office and my boss runs out from his office. He's like, 
did you just close a deal? And I was like, no, but I just set an appointment. And he goes, oh, get out of here, right? Like, and he walks off, like, he's like, just get out of here, go do your thing. So, so that, that moment in my life was really the catalyst or the epiphany that I had is like, oh, I can learn this and I can become very good at it if I just study it and I try it. And so over the next period of years, I invested hundreds of thousands of into my own education to learn number one, how to set appointments, but then number two, how to close deals. Because what happened was I get in these appointments and then I would never close a deal. And so I hit this other wall and it was like, bam, like, how do you actually take someone through a selling process? And I thought, well, maybe there's a system for that too. And then again, I found selling systems and I went through like 50 of them. And I was like, here's kind of all the common elements. What if I just used these ones? And I distilled it down to what I thought was most effective. And that worked for me. And so at that time, I ended up taking this business um, from three to $37 million and did it in like eight months, just because I understood the system. And I, I was a hustler and I made a bunch of commission and that ended up allowing me to buy my own company in Vegas which I put my selling system and my prospecting system in. And I grew that business from 250K a year to 8 million. And then that one got sold from underneath me. I was like, okay, well, it worked again there. Uh, again, went down a dark path at that stage, but just to fast forward the story. Uh, then I, m my wife was like, hey, do something. And I ended up selling roofing material. So I put my little systems in there and I broke all their sales records in the first like three years. And then I realized I didn't like roofers. And so at that stage, I said, no, I'm done with that. Um, and then we found the online space and I learned this thing called marketing. And that was where like, I have a love, a deep love for marketing. Um, but I'm at the core, I'm a sales professional and I'll always be a sales guy and a constant learner of marketing and sales. Right. So that's kind of a little bit of a background for you. I, I love it. I mean, I agree. Like I agree with the thing that you can learn anything. Yes. And it really takes like just sitting down and doing it. One question that sticks out to me, though, I, I hear this, I'm sure you've heard this all the time from people like, they try something for a day, or they try something for a week, right? I've talked to people who are like, I did a webinar, and nobody showed up, or I did a webinar, and there are four people on and nobody bought webinars don't work. Blah. And I'm like, bro, like, come on. You, you did one webinar with four people. Let's try doing a hundred webinars. So what did, I mean, that's, I, I have to be honest, like in my first go around, like my first event completely, I had to cancel. It was in Las Vegas, the treasure Island, 2000. I bought a room for 2000 people, spent my entire 401k. I was like, Tony Robbins says, take action. People are going to show up. Couldn't sell because I didn't know anything about sales or marketing. I literally had no idea. Ouch. Canceled the event, lost all my money. Um, but that was like the, the thing I was like, I'm not going to give up. I had good friends who were entrepreneurs and they, they asked kind of like what your dad did. They asked like, do you want to do this? Do you believe you can? Okay, go learn. And they told me the same thing. They said, you don't have any money for courses, go buy some books. So I started just buying and reading books. So what I want to know what's like 2,400 knows most people would have quit after a day or two. What kept you going at that time? I mean, did you have like 20 kids we haven't heard about or? No, 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 I have no kids. I have two giant cats that live here with us. I happen to love cats. Um, the, uh, I, I, I was driven by the one thing that I told my dad I wanted to do is I was like, how do you make a boatload of money? And he gave me three options. And I said, well, if those are the three options, I, I don't know two of them. I'm going to do this one until it works. And I'm just so stubborn and like hard headed about I got to make it work. I can't fail. I don't fail. That's not me. And so just continue to beat down the path. And a lot of people come to me and they say things, the exact same thing. Sean, I sent 10 DMs and nobody responded. I'm quitting. Well, uh, like we need to set some realistic ex expectations of what it's actually going to take. And I tell people there's really kind of three things that you need to almost master anything, but specifically sales. Number one, you have to be convicted right? You have to be convicted in the thing that you're taking to market. You're, what are you empowering other people? What problem are you solving? And, 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 and really be convicted about that and be sold on it yourself. Because if you're not mm -hmm. sold on your own thing yourself, stop what you're doing. Go sit on the railroad tracks with a gallon of beer and figure out why. Write a list of all the things that you're not convicted about your own thing and then resell yourself or get somebody around you in your circle that can sell you on why you should be doing the thing that you're doing. Get conviction right? Secondly is consistency. 
you have to give it some effort consistently, consistently, consistently. Continue to knock on doors, continue to make cold calls, continue to send DMs, continue to do events, continue to send to run webinars, right? And it, consistency will develop your voice. What Russell Brunson, I've been in his inner circle for five years, as you probably know, um, one of the things he said to me was, if you start doing webinars, it's going to take you 20 or 30 attempts before you even find your voice. And that's not even when the sales are going to start coming. Like you, I did three webinars per week for three years straight. And it wasn't until like six, eight months in where the real dollars started being generated, right? And so that's the second thing is consistently do the activity. And lastly, persistence. No, you're going to get punched in your face. No, you're going to get knocked down. But if you get knocked down and you can see up, you better get up and go do it again. That's from Les Brown. But yeah, that's that's what I would say. That's I mean, those you're preaching to the choir. I agree with all of them. Thank you for sharing with the audience. The one question I want to ask you is what is the best way to build consistency and persistence is there do you have a hack for that what did you do for yourself i mean it sounds like you were going into an office to make those calls i know it was also a long time ago nowadays if you want to do something new the webinar how did you because i know people who say oh i really want to do that thing but then they have a hard time doing the thing was there something you did to build in consistency yeah, so um, for, for us, and, and I, I think the better example is when we went, went into marketing and, and I had grown a little bit and I had known some things. Um, when we first went into marketing, um, we, our first coach, his name was Brandon Odom, still love the guy, dearly work with him closely still, but he, he, he uh, showed us Russell and, and we went down the path with learning about Russell, spent a lot of money with Russell and asked him, but the answer to that question is very simply, find somebody who already has the results that you want and then ask them questions on when they first got started. What is the thing? What, how long of a runway did they need in order to start seeing results? That's what I'm talking about, expectations. Go to somebody who's done the thing and say, what should I set my expectations as in order to find success? Ty Lopez says things like, do something for 18 months and don't quit until the end of 18 months and then evaluate. So just shut your mind off and run the play for 18 months. And if you don't like it after 18 months, make a switch. That was a great expectation barrier or parameter to kind of set. And, that, and that's why I say, I was like, find somebody who already knows how to click the button, so to speak, and ask them, what should my expectation be? Because if you try to set it yourself and you don't know what you don't know, guess what? You're going to fail. That's, I think that is, that could be a golden rule. Because when you have clear expectations, what, what everybody hears, and I mean, the marketer in me loves this, right? Because it's easy to say, like, you can do X in a month. But the real thing is, like, you're going to have to, we tell everyone, right? You're going to have to stick to it. You're going to have to do, I always tell people, give five webinars to an empty living room like to your computer, just to get yep. practice. Yep. And then you can give your first webinar. And if you have five people on, consider that a win. You're not going for sales, you're going for reps. And I tell people you want to do 10 webinars before you ever expect a sale. And then somebody inevitably says, yeah, but if I really, if I really work at it, what can I expect? And I'm like, well, you know, you can succeed in a first one or two. And everybody hears that as, well, I, one webinar, and or they hear Gary V being like, just fucking... Just, you know, like, rah, just get into it and like grind and you're going to be successful and run the, like run the sprint. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Marathon. Yeah. Like the. Totally. Agree. I totally agree with you. I couldn't have said it better myself, Steve. Right on. The I don't money. know where the, uh, where the F-bomb came from. I'm well, passion, dude. I mean, cusses, like you're, but... obviously you're passionate about what you do. So am I, dude. I swear all the time. I think they say people that swear are more trustworthy <laughs> anyway. So good, good on you. The, okay. So. We just covered some of the mindset stuff. I want to go through one other mindset shift that you think people need, because I hear this all the time, right? I'm scared to do sales. I don't like sales. Why won't people just buy to me? How do I sell without doing sales? What do you think causes that mindset and how, how can people fix it? Because you have to be confident in what you're selling. I like the conviction piece a lot. There are plenty of people I've met who are convicted. They believe what they do works, but they still, when they hit that point that you hit where like your, your hair stands up on your back of your neck and you have to ask for the sale, they won't do it. Sure. What changed and how do you think people can change that? Um, overcoming fear in two words, right? Um, I, I believe that uh, fear is manifested in the mind. 
Uh, in fact, there's a, there's a proven study, and I don't remember the, the group that did this study. Let me ask you this, because it'll be interactive. And those of you that are listening, like drop a comment below if you know this or don't know this. Um, what are the two fears that you're inherently born with? There's only two. The rest of them are all made up. So what are the two? Steve, I'll give you a second. I know what they are. You do? Oh, boy. oh yeah. Okay. So for those of you watching, and my answer might be different than yours, but what the study I read, it was the fear of heights. That's number one. And the fear of loud noises. That's number two. Right. And so if we understand as a factual thing that those are the only two fears that we're born with and the rest of it is made up. Now you're just succumbing to um, social pressure. And so if, if and so like, how do you like get into a conversation? and You're like, hey, I don't want to sell. I don't want to feel salesy. Well, then have a conversation and see instead of trying to convince someone Try to identify from that person if they have the problem that you solve or not. And if they don't have the problem that you solve, say, look, you don't have the problem that I solve. We need to move on with respect. I'll give you a referral or whatever. If they do have the problem that you solve and you're able to establish that through a conversation with the person, then you say, look, I solve this thing seven days a week. I'm really freaking good at it. And I'm curious if this is something that you're really interested in solving or not. And at that point, that person can say yes or no. If they say yes, you still haven't made a sale, but you've made an emotional close in the conversation. If you have an emotional close, then all you have to say is, great, let's just figure out what it takes to actually solve the thing and do it. Are you good with that? And now you have the deal. You have to go through the logic and you have to figure out, you know, how can they afford your services and how do they make buying decisions and what the next steps are going to be. And those things are very easy to come to and do, but it's like, it's that first piece. People buy emotionally and justify logically. So in your selling process, sell emotionally and then justify logically. It's very easy to do. And it starts with, Hey, don't, here's my stuff, buy my stuff. It's not ever that. If you feel like you're verbally vomiting or diarrheaing at the mouth on somebody with your stuff, your products, your features, your benefits, you're doing it wrong. Instead, say, hey, how's it going? Right. One of the best examples that I can share here is when you go to a live event. Right. When you go to a live event, there's two really main things that happen. The first is you go into the room, you sit in a chair and you absorb content from experts. Right. So that's one piece of an event. That's not where people in the crowd, you or me sitting in a chair, are connecting and doing business. That happens in the hallway, right? The majority of business at events is created from hallway conversations, mm -hmm. right? So when you go into that hallway in an event and you start a conversation with somebody, how do you usually start it? Hey, man, nice shoes. Or I love that shirt. Or you say something that's going to get them to engage with you. Likewise, when you're playing in the DMs, don't send your first message and vomit your offer at somebody because that's what everyone does and that feels disgusting. Rather start with a compliment. Hey, dude, your profile's on point. Looks like you're kicking ass. Great job. Keep it up. Get engagement in the DMs and now start the conversation. That's the big secret. That is, I like, I, I think that is 100% it. The uh, always, always, I mean, Dale Carnegie, right? How to win friends and influence people. I read that book when I was in seventh grade and it changed my life. I waited tables. I started waiting tables in eighth grade. Yeah. Um, I was like 15 years old on a work permit. I talked them. I, they wanted me to, but to uh, do dishes and bus tables. I talked them into letting me wait tables two nights a week because I learned, I read that book in study hall. And I remember the teacher walked by and was like, you probably shouldn't be reading that book. Obviously they didn't know what the book was about. So I just took those principles, always be more interested in the other person. What, how can I help you? What can I do for you? And as a 15 year old kid waiting tables, I made more money than my assistant manager at the restaurant because I knew how to be more interested in people. And that's really all selling is. It's not about, hey, you need this thing, buy this thing. It's going to do blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares. But hey, what, what's your challenge right now? What are you struggling with? How can I help? Yeah, I have a. I have a perfect example. Um, I worked at Chili's. Everyone knows Chili's. It's the restaurant and baby back ribs, you know, the song, um, if you remember back in the day. But um, when I when I went to interview there, um, I, I think I was 17. So similar to you. And uh, I, I got through all the thing. I did the test with the menu. And then I got to the place where the guy was like, sell me the salt shaker. Right. 
Yeah. And I, I, I sat there for a minute. And I was like, man, how does every, everybody else, how do they sell that salt shaker? And I thought to myself, they probably go on the path of feature benefit, feature benefit, feature benefit. Hey, look, this is anti-slip glass and this top will never come off and da, 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 whatever the feature yeah. benefit was for the salt shaker. And, then, and so I sat there and I was really quiet for about two minutes. He's like, you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm just thinking. And, uh, and then I said, I said, I don't remember the guy's name. I think it was Ron. I was like, hey, Ron, let me ask you a question, man. Thank you for having me in today. Um, have you ever like tried to pour salt or pepper on your food and all of a sudden just spilled everywhere or worse, you dropped the salt shaker down and it spilled everywhere. Yeah. That happened to me. I was like, tell me what happened. Did you finish your meal? Like, what was that experience like? And then Ron opens his mouth and he starts talking about this terribly horrible experience that he had and how it like ruined the whole, it was on a date and his date hated it. And he made this really fancy story. I don't know if it's true or not, but it, it was, I guess he was playing role play or whatever. And I was like, well, that's why you should actually buy our salt shakers because we have this anti-slip thing and we have this cap that doesn't come off. And so that'll never happen to you. Is this something you want? And he put his pen down. He's like, you're hired. He's like, you're the first person on earth that's ever done anything like that. He's like, you're going to crush. Same thing as you, I crushed, right? So that was the idea. So it's the same yeah. exact thing. That, I mean, that really is it. A hundred percent. So, okay, let's talk, let's switch from mindset because we kind of, we've worked on people's minds. If you've listened to this and you're still like, I hate sales, trust me, it is about helping the other people. Everyone I've always met says, I love helping other people. Well, then just help other people. Just don't solve their problem. You talk to them, figure out what their problem is, and then show them the solution. They will buy it from you. So let's get into some tactics Let's talk about DMs a little bit. Let's talk about flow chat. If you guys, if you're turned on by this conversation, if you're like, this conversation works for me and I want to know more, there's a link in the description that will get you on a call where they will walk you through how this works. This is how you sell through DMs and it works across pretty much every platform. So I'm going to let you, you can talk a little bit about flow chat, but then let's get into some of the tactics that people can use. Yeah, well, Flowchat was designed to kind of solve our own problem um, from the beginning. And so um, it really, you say help other people. I think helping yourself first is also really valuable and important to do. And so as our journey kind of continued and, and we ended up exiting um, from our first software company and we went into building a high ticket agency, um, the the thing that we were doing for them, these, these entrepreneurs would come to us and they would say, uh, Sean, Chris Baden is my partner for seven years. I love the guy. He's totally righteous. And it, it was Sean and Chris, the Sean and Chris agency, a high-tech sales agency that we helped clients to, to hire on board and train sales teams. Mm -hmm. And um, in that process, what we learned was uh, people would come to us and say, Sean, I want to help people, but I don't want to sell. And that happened to be like rampant across all these online entrepreneurs and socialpreneurs and all these people that have businesses. And we said, okay, cool. Well, we can help you build a sales team. Here's how to hire on board and train a sales team. And so we picked up a handful of, of companies and we started serving them and we put the ecosystem in there and it fixed their sales problem for about four to six months. And then at four to six months after that, the entrepreneur would come back to us and be like, Sean and Chris, thank you so much. Now I don't have to sell anymore, but now I have this anxiety. I can't sleep at night because I don't know where the next deal's coming from. And I don't know how to feed the sales team that you just built me. And we thought to ourselves like, oh, well, we have built our own businesses using this little duct tape system with a piece of paper and, and spreadsheet. Maybe it'll work for them. And so we took the system that solved our own problem and said, here, try this. And it was really rough, right? It was, <laughs> it was, it was horrible, but it was work. It worked. And so we, we, we kind of spruced it up a bit and we put it in each of our high eight ticket agency clients, um, businesses, and to our surprise, bam, they all hit it out of the park. And it was so apparent to us that that was the missing link for all these other businesses. Like I said, you can learn sales in a weekend, but if you don't have the at bats, you'll never get good. And so it was like, here's the system that can put all the at bats on your plate and so then we said, instead of running this agency, we can help more people solve this one problem because they all have the problem. Let's run a mastermind. Didn't know how to do that. Hired a mastermind coach, Chris Williams, love the guy with all my heart, taught us the mastermind model. And we put this play in. It was a, it was a high ticket mastermind, 25,000 a year. And it was the first three months. Here's the way to put the system into your business. And then there was nine months of high ticket sales coaching on the back end of it. 
And we put this, all, we had dozens and dozens of businesses run through this model. And in the first three months, we put the system in, got them to execute and run on it. Again, it was off a piece of paper and a spreadsheet, kind of archaic, but 78, almost 80% of the businesses coming through that mastermind had hockey stick growth. And I don't know about you, but it, it, you know, look at, back at all the clients you've helped with everything you've done, like 80% success in any business is incredible and almost never heard of. And so we're like, whoa, this is really working. Let's put a software behind it. Why don't we make it even easier to solve the problem? And that was the birth of what is now Flowchat. Flowchat is the system that works across nine social platforms, and we own the DM space. We have AI technology, and we've put it at people's fingertips, and it, it, and it really does a couple of things very, very well. Number one, it allows you to go to any platform anywhere and import highly qualified targeted prospects in one click. Okay, example, go to a Facebook group that happens to, say, say you're an electrician, Go to, go to a, a Facebook group for plumbers, same client base, and one click and grab all of the group members and put them into a Kanban style system where you can start a messaging sequence to sell them into your electrician thing, right? Mm -hmm. As an example. And the second thing it does is you set up a predefined messaging sequence that's authentic, starting and leading with questions instead of throwing up on people with your offer to nurture and build relationship before you get to an ask or a call to action, right? So you put the predefined message sequence in there. And then the third thing is you just send messages. And then we put on top of this, so here's the reporting. So what, what Flowtech can actually do for you is you can build this system. It will manage all the mess in Messenger, right? All the chaos in the comments, all of that stuff just gets completely managed 100% in a Kanban style board. You've seen them like Trello, you just slide cards. It's really easy. And then we have reporting on the top. The reporting is really powerful because you can see how effective your organic messaging system is actually working. And then you can go back and optimize it. And it's just like anything else, like it works so well. In fact, you don't even need paid ads anymore. Imagine this, the other tech that it has available is you could go to any com or any post that's made anywhere, people that have liked your post or not even your post. Maybe it's a competitor's ad. Maybe it's just some thought leader in your space. Click a button and import all the people that have liked that or all the people that have commented on that topic. These are relevant people that you should qualify and start conversations with to close deals. That's what Flowchat is and does, right? It empowers you to get your message out so you can solve more problems for people. So it's, it's an accelerator, it's an amplifier for the thing that you're already doing because you're connecting with people. And again, it falls in line with good communication. Man, I love it. That, I mean, it, it sounds like it will solve a lot of problems and make it really easy. I'm going to tee up a question for you because I can hear a lot of people out there being like, but technology scares me or technology is hard. How does this get set up? Yeah, uh, actually, it can be set up as quick as a couple of hours. A great example, I had this young lady, her name was Jess Ann. She came to me and she said, Sean, I want to start a dog walking business. I've never started a dog walking business. And I was like, okay, well, let's talk about it, right? Like, why do you want to do this? And she said, because I'm really passionate about dogs. I love walking them, grooming them. It's my thing. I'm like, okay, great. So what would be a message that you would send or, or, you know, to somebody to like ask if they had a dog? Well, hey, do you happen to have a dog? I was like, great question. Let's start with that one, right? So we took that message and we just stored it in the first part of the system. Very simple to do, two clicks and it's in there. And then we said, where are we going to find people that potentially have dogs? Well, there's dog lover groups. So we went to a dog lover group and we click one and click import and we imported like 150 people in less than five seconds into this pipeline. And I said, just go out and try to start sending these messages. In her first five hours, she booked three calls, right? Two of those calls became clients in her first two days or three days or something after she's taken the call. And she just lit a fire under her. And now she has 25 people that walk dogs for her and she's building a dog walking empire. So how quick can it be set up in less than a couple of hours? If you want our assistance in what to say, because that's where most people stumble, we have templates galore, right? Of, on every platform to do pretty much anything. And, or we also have an a la carte service that will allow us to build a pipeline with all the structure, all the SOPs. So all you have to do is put people in and send messages. That's it. Awesome. I like the fact that you make it easy makes it a win. Sure. Um, I know that the software will work. If you send out messages, 
like just what you said, you have to be willing to press send. You can't just do 10 DMs, but if you're willing like to go, you're basically going to a group saying these people are the right fit, downloading them, putting in the pipeline and sending them messages, starting to connect. That is a great way to start doing sales. I love it. Sean, we're at the top of the hour. I know you've got to jump off. You've been incredibly gracious to give us a lot of stuff. In the link down below, we have a link where you can book a call with their team. They'll walk you through. They'll show you what this can do live, which is really what you're all looking to see. I think we're also um, going to put a short video walkthrough of this down there so they can see it as well. Sean, in parting, is there anything you want to leave people with? Yeah, I'll share this. Um, Don't be afraid to book that call. Click the button and book the call. And here's why. Because we only really kind of ask three things in that call. Number one, can Flowchat solve a problem? Yes or no? If no, we'll tell you, right? If yes, we'll go down the path. Number two, if yes, how and where are we going to actually deploy the tech to solve your problem? So we're going to set up the strategy before we even get started. And then the last thing is, what does success look like to you before we even start. And if we can get to the answer on all three of those things and you know it's a good fit, then it's an easy choice, right? That's the the idea. So the calls are very, very, very casual. There's no pressure or anything. Again, just click the button, book the call. Awesome. All right, Sean, thank you so much for coming on and sharing all of your wisdom with us. I really appreciate it. To everybody else out there, until next time, take action, change lives, and make money. We'll see you soon. Are you looking to scale your business, but trying to figure out how to get your message across? Well, go to storyselling.how to grab my free course that will show you how to discover everything that you need to build your business through stories. These stories work, whether it's in social media, email, or public speaking, there are five core stories that you'll learn. You'll be able to use all of them by the time you're done with this course. Again, that is storyselling.how. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to tune in next time.